Hello everyone, welcome back. You are watching That Car Chick and today we are going to be learning about compression ratios. Now a compression ratio is basically the total amount of cylinder volume at bottom dead center compared to the total amount of volume at top dead center and it only calculates the volume compressed. I'll explain. Now on the inside of an engine you can see there is a cylinder which is on the main block of the engine where the piston sits and moves up and down and on the cylinder head is the chamber this is where the valves sit on the top and where the combustion of the air and fuel mixture happens. Now, as we have learnt previously in my Otto cycle video, we know that the air and fuel molecules in the cylinder have to be squeezed really, really, really tight by the piston that goes to the top dead center to ensure proper combustion. So let's say, for example, that our cylinder has a volume of nine and our chamber at the top has a volume of one. So to calculate the compression ratio of an engine, we take the volume of the cylinder and add it to the volume of the chamber. In this case, it would be nine plus one, which is 10. You then take that total volume and divide it by the volume of the chamber, which is one. So in this scenario, we would have a total volume of the cylinder of 10 to the ratio of the total volume of the chamber, which is one. So we would get a compression ratio of 10 to one. So why do we need to know the compression ratios when building an engine? A lower compression ratio would mean less power, which means simply that a higher compression ratio would mean higher power. Although you need to be careful to ensure that you get the correct compression ratio when you're going higher. This is to prevent detonation, which is when combustion happens earlier than it is supposed to. This can over time, or even in the short run, cause a lot of internal damage to your engine, such as your valves and your pistons. But why does a higher compression ratio increase power? It is all to do with the air and fuel molecules that get injected into the cylinder. If you have a lower compression ratio, it doesn't squeeze together the molecules as hard as a higher compression ratio. So the harder you squeeze those molecules together, when the mixture ignites, those molecules can bump into each other faster and quicker, causing a bigger reaction, which can then force the piston down quicker which then increases your brake horsepower. Roughly a 10 to 12 to one compression ratio is seen in your everyday cars with the 12 to one compression ratio being more like for performance cars with sport modes and things like that. Then you get your 12 and a half to one compression ratios. This is engines with turbochargers and potentially superchargers and just bigger, more performance engines. Now, when you have an engine that has a 12 and a half to one compression ratio or even higher, you need to start thinking about other factors that affect the combustion process at the specific compression ratio. The main two components you need to think about is fuel and air. The higher your compression ratio means that it wants to take even more air in. So you want to make sure you have a good airflow, good air filters, and potentially a cold air intake system. You also want to make sure that your pipes are the correct shape to allow all of that air to flow as quickly to the cylinder as it can. You also want to think about fuel, and this doesn't just mean what type of injectors you use, although that is very important. You want to start thinking about what kind of fuel you use. So you know when you pull up to the petrol station and there's that one overpriced petrol pump and the cheaper normal petrol pump? Well actually the difference isn't only in price, they have different octane ratings. The higher the octane rating of the fuel just means that it can withstand a lot more pressure before detonating. So for your 12.5 to one compression ratios, you're really wanting to use an octane 98 or higher. You will also notice that diesels have a much higher compression ratio than petrols. This is because diesel cars, unlike petrols, do not have spark plugs to ignite the mixture. Diesels fully rely on the compression. So for a diesel engine to be able to properly combust its fuel, it needs to squeeze that mixture really, really, really hard so that the fuel and air mixture heats up to the correct temperature for combustion. Now this compression ratio can be increased by increasing anything that affects the displacement, the volume of the cylinder. This can be done in a variety of ways, depending how involved and in-depth you wanna get. And although there's so many ways out there, people normally use the main two. This is increasing the stroke length, which is how far the piston goes up and down. So if it goes down further, it can take in more volume. Or it can be done by increasing the size of the bore. This means that the piston and the head is wider, which means it can fit more volume into that same stroke length. 
Now let's go back to where I said at the start that the compression ratio only calculates what is compressed. This is referring to the differences between the Otto and the Atkinson cycle. If you haven't yet seen my Otto and Atkinson cycle videos, you might want to go give them a watch first because it will help you understand the info I'm about to say next. Okay, so your Otto cycle is the most common type of combustion cycle where all of the valves are closed during the compression stroke. However, the Atkinson cycle or the variations of the Atkinson cycle keep the intake valves open during part of the compression stroke. This means the Otto cycle would have a 10 to 1 compression ratio because all of that volume that's inside the cylinder is shut in and is being compressed and mixed ready for combustion. As the Atkinson cycle allows some of the air and fuel mixture to go back through the intake valve, the compression ratio might only be 8 to 1. This is because the total volume of the compressed mixture has now been decreased because it has allowed it to escape out of the intake valve. And because some of that mixture has escaped, the total volume in the cylinder that's remaining is less than what it would be for the Otto cycle. So for the Otto cycle, for example, the cylinder might have to compress a volume of 10 to get to top dead center, whereas for the Atkinson cycle, as some of it escapes, you would only need to compress a volume of about eight to top dead center. I know I've just repeated myself like a million times, but I hope it is making sense because it can be confusing at the start, but once you get it, it's easy to work out. But that is it. That is all of the basic information you need to know about compression ratios. I hope it all made sense and I hope you learned something new today. If you do have any questions and want a further explanation or more information, feel free to leave any questions down below in the comments. And if you want to see more car content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. But for now, peace out.